Hello, hello. I'm gonna try something different here. Um, I wanna try streaming Civ 2. As far as I know, I haven't seen any people do this before. I don't know why. It's such a famous game, such an iconic game. I played it a ton as a kid growing up. I feel like uh, I feel like everyone did, but that's probably just a sign of like people I know or people I interacted with on the internet back then. Anyway, just this classic 90s uh, turn-based strategy game, and uh, it was like it, it's almost exactly the same game as the original Civilization. They just tweaked it a bit. They they changed the combat system, which made some changes, but it's the same basic game, just updated graphics, uh, updated the <laughs> the main screen. As you can see, there's a naked lady in the main screen. However, it's this classic like 90s game interface where it's just uh, like Windows buttons on here. It's very bare bones when you look at it now. The loading screen music is kind of repetitive. It's still cool, but it's a bit repetitive. And unfortunately, the, the version I have doesn't have in-game music. I'm also going to be playing one of the scenarios because uh, I like the World War II scenario that came with the game much better than the actual, than the normal game itself. Um, it just, it's better balanced, it has a lot more options. They really set it up well. Uh, I could say a lot about that, but I will just say that the, the regular game kind of comes down to uh, infinite city sprawl, building lots and lots of cities, and then a lot of tedious micro to keep each one happy. I like the World War II scenario better because you just skip straight to the late game where it's a lot more advanced. It just goes straight to your your Windows folder here. Blah blah blah. You get a nice little scenario introduction. The Russian bear sleeps. And I'm gonna give myself a challenge. I'm gonna play as Spain. You can play as any any country you want. Um, if you play as any of the main ones of uh, Axis allies or Russians, it's kind of easy because the, the AI isn't very good. Even on Deity, the AI in this game just isn't as good. But playing as one of the minor countries makes it a lot, makes it for an interesting challenge, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna play a Deity. It doesn't, in a scenario like this, it doesn't really make a huge difference. It mostly just affects how unhappy your people get. Gender does not matter at all. Name, sure. It starts with the, the Axis AI doing its thing, attacking France. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see everything the AI is doing, you just hear sound effects. I'll try to explain this as I go, so when you attack, when you attack a city, with air units, you get this special anti-air defense. Um, the scenario is, is set up to mimic World War II itself, so it starts with the Axis running over France and attacking, and attacking Paris. There's nothing you can do. Um, the French chance are just not, not defending properly. There's no defenses. So just, the AI always takes it. They've, They've done a good job, I think, to make it so that the AI makes, you know, the, the quote-unquote proper moves, the historical moves, and it's still within the context. Uh, I'll stop the next. I'll explain more once the action is stopped, although I, if anybody is watching this, they probably have some, some idea of what's going on. Alright. Alright, so the AI has finished its turn, now it's my turn. They took two cities. They took Paris and Amsterdam. Um, there's nothing I can really do except watch, because I'm playing as Spain. I'm just on the outside of all that conflict. You have to sort of, as a small neutral country, you have to play the long game to win. You can research stuff. Uh, you research just like the normal game. Unfortunately, the, the tech costs are also set at the normal game tech costs. And because I'm this small country, you can't really research anything, so it doesn't really matter what I pick. I'll I'll be getting some text later from from the AI, but there's there's no way I can actually research anything myself. Uh, sure, mass 
production. One million citizens doesn't mean anything. All right, here's what I gotta work with. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cities, which I guess that's a reasonable number of cities. It's the Axis doesn't even have that many. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirty, forty, fifty. So they have like twenty or something. They have about twice of what I have. Except their cities are way, way better. Um, I can't go in and look at them, but uh, you can see that from the graphics, they have this kind of modern graphic with skyscrapers, whereas mine have this brick graphic, which means they're a tech year ahead of mine. I, I forget which technology it is, but they have more advanced technology. And they also have way bigger cities. They have, like, Berlin is a size 20, whereas the biggest I have is my capital, Madrid, is size 8. So basically none of my cities is any good, and most of them are really bad. I also don't really have any army to start with. I have one tank, which is something. At least I have the technology to build tanks, so you're, I'm not totally behind in technology. I actually have like all the technology I would really, well, most of the technology I would want. But most of my cities are just like riflemen, nothing but a rifleman, which are in this game they're like. Um, I guess I should I should explain how units work in this game. It's it's not like the later Civilization games where there's just one combat value. Instead, they have an attack and a defense. They have the first number is ADM, attack, defense, movement. So the first number is their attacking strength when they're attacking something else. The second is their defense strength when something else attacks them. Riflemen at 5-4, that it almost doesn't matter whether they're attacking or defending. Most units have a higher attack strength, so riflemen are really designed to sit there and defend your cities, whereas like armor have twice the attack strength they're designed for attacking out, and artillery have 10 to 1, so they're really, you need to be attacking with them. They can't defend themselves at all. There's also this uh, HP, firepower, and hit points. It's a little, yeah, it's a little tough to explain what that means, but higher numbers are better, basically. Basically, the um, first number is how, how much how much HP they have. The second number is how much damage they do each time they win a round of combat. Uh, keep this working for now. Okay, so what do we got? You can get a overview. 13 riflemen, 1 alpine troops, which is like a slightly improved version of riflemen. One armor, one fighter. That's all we got. That's not enough to fight like anybody. Um, you can see from the mini map here, it's it's Europe during World War II with a little tiny bit of America, just just two cities, which I think is kind of funny. Just New York and Washington. They're both these awesome cities, that basically as big of a city as you can get in this game. And they start with a bunch of units over here which we're going to see it doesn't end well. And then they have the, the allies. So America and, and United Kingdom are just one civilization in this. Um, all their cities are great, but they have very few of them and very little land. They have a big navy, but no army. Axis, like I said, has good cities, and a good starting military. Russian has a lot of cities, but they're undeveloped. They have the same like brick. Uh, icons that I do, so they're not as advanced. They don't have any railroads, they just have roads, and they don't have much of a starting army. And over here there's Turkey, which is kind of a, kind of like Spain. They, they only have a few cities, they're not very advanced, they don't have much going on. A couple other French cities here. France is also about at the same level as Spain, except uh, a little bit more of a starting military, and they start off at war with the Axis, so that's not good for them. But they'll make peace pretty soon. It's like it's like scripted, so they'll always make peace. A few allied cities over here in the Middle East. A couple Axis cities here, so they just sort of squabble against each other here. A few bar These red units are barbarians. They don't really do anything. They just randomly move around. Um, and these 
these teal ones are the neutral civilization. That's just, it's another civilization. That's what's called the neutrals. They're really weak. They have like the ancient age technology. And then just a, a ton of empty land is kind of funny. Uh, it's good land. Like in theory, you could just start your own civilization around here. And I think people do that if you want to power game the scenario. Might do that. We'll see how it goes. But then the mainland Europe is all pretty well settled. So there's no, there's no real room here. Um, there's some room if I can make it. If I can get to Africa, I might settle some cities down here. That might be worth doing actually, because especially this coastline is good land. The desert itself is not very good. All of these, these uh, oasis tiles are good. If you've I'm assuming people have played some sort of civilization before. It's not that different from any other game. There's there's tiles, they produce yields. Some tiles are better than others. But um, I won't be building any like really huge great cities. I just gotta make do with what I can. Alright, so first of all, I will not be doing any science. Like, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I even with this even with like Even with taxes as high as they can go, it doesn't let you, the stupid monarchy doesn't let you increase more. So I'm just barely making money right now. You're so poor at the start of this, you have like nothing. Um, you can sell the city walls, I don't need those. You can, you can sell city improvements in this game, which is kind of funny. You just sell it and instantly get money. Engineers. I have no engineers to start with. I'm just gonna build engineers everywhere. Uh, yes. Let's see. Should I even keep these? The thing about the city improvements is like. First, you can sell them for money. Also, they cost money each turn. Like every single turn, they cost money. So I don't even know if it's worth keeping them. Like the stupid marketplace. Uh, 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 I'll think about it. I'll sell the city wall here. I have one, one good wonder, Magellan's expedition that makes ships go faster, except I don't have any ships. Cathedrals or not? Do you remember what the different what everything does here? Cathedrals make four unhappy for a maintenance cost of three, compared to temples that make two content for a cost of one. So the temples are a better deal. Especially not here, I don't need it. So you see one of them instantly became unhappy, which is annoying, but it's alright.
that you can you can buy, pay money to get stuff instantly. Um, and it depends on how the cost depends on how much you have done already. But because I sold some building that frees up some cash to get stuff immediately. also use you can use units to keep your cities happy too unfortunately I don't have enough units to really do much but I can use these this will help Ugh. one thing slightly the interface in this game is a little bit annoying like um, I don't get a chance to move these because they already did a fortification action like before I even had a chance to touch them they did a fortification action so yeah it's a bit annoying. Let's see this is also costing me maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. So the <laughs> even the fighter keeps people happy. units for now and so I don't have to deal with them um, let's see so the, the basic overview is there's nothing I can do initially I, I can't fight anybody even certainly not not anyone that borders me I guess I could fight the neutrals if I could get over there with my my one tank and maybe get over there and do something but um, basically I just need to stay out of war for a while and build up but there's a lot I can build up because the the Spain land is so undeveloped here that it barely even has roads it only has one mine I need to get a lot better and build up a lot more there's no rush because I'm you're not at war with anyone Battle of the Atlantic going on here with destroyers fighting against submarines. The, that's a destroyer there. special unit that gives you money when you send it to another city. It's sort of like a great merchant in the later Civ games. You, uh...
as possible here. Alright. I think the first thing to do is build roads. So these little, the brown things are roads. They speed up movement and they give you an extra trade, which is like commerce. It can be either gold or research. Mostly gold. And gold is what I really need right now because I'm just, I'm just going broke right now. Or I'm barely making money at all. So right now, the city produces three food, one production, but add a road and adds an extra money. Let's see, I, will... I think it was a 39 before, so it just gives me an extra gold right away. Here too. Instant extra money. Uh, put the fighter to sleep for now. I'm not going to be using it for a while. The rivers take a little, take an extra turn to build on, but the rivers themselves also generate extra money. I'll try to play it pretty quickly, but there is just a lot of micro you have to do in this game. Actually declare war on us, but I don't think they will. Cities. It's one of the better cities that I, not that that means much, but it can produce some stuff. Build a barracks first and then start building military units there. I'll just let that finish on its own. The other advantage of roads is you can you can move on them faster and I will at some point go attack people.
So Madrid is my best city, has the most production. Uh, allies are in my territory. That, aha, that makes their units teleport away. It's like the closest thing this game has to actual boundaries. No boundaries in this game. No boundaries at all. See, he's hostile. I don't think there's really any point in talking to him. Because if they if you talk to him, they just demand money from you, which is kind of annoying. These units here are cruisers, which are a, a naval unit that is not not normally all that strong, but I'm so weak that I can't really do anything against them. Right, they just brag about their technology sometimes. and to finish buildings when they're almost done. job making this scenario to make it, I don't want to say accurate, but you know, follow the, the broad strokes of history. Uh, so it's not like a good city, but it'll do something. Now, armor. Armor is by far the best, best unit I can build right now. Some good land over here that's actually not being used. Um, these whale tiles are amazing for some reasons. They give so much yield. Some fish over here. I could settle here and get the fish. That might be worth it. I get get this one.
the other nice thing about pulling those roads to boost your commerce is you get more luxuries from that to keep your people happy. sound and then you can't so I'll have to go through the desert to get around I'm gonna settle some cities around here because I think it's worth it Sevastopol have city walls, this little icon here, which massively increases their defense. These Kiev and, Man and Munsk and these other cities don't have any, so it's really easy to attack them. Over here you'll notice uh, this Bordeaux does not, but Marseille does, not, does, so Bordeaux was the easiest target to attack first. I'm not going to bother making a, gra a granary or any like city improvements. Well, make a temple. content so the city can keep producing stuff. Sliding around. Doo -doo -doo. saying to any of that. Thank you. 
can't buy stuff in their civil disorder, which would have kept them. Uh, I forgot to change this last turn. And you have to, you can, like it explains, you have to, you lose some production if you switch between types. But otherwise, it's funny, you can, you, between, in the same type is fine. You can, you can switch and keep your production. So there's a lot of cheese you can do with that, especially with when you're building wonders. right here on the airfield. That way I get the fish, one hill, and these two grass shields. Or I could just settle right here and just take the two hills. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Just reload, shall we? Sorry, this is pretty cheesy, I know.
I, I will be going to the war with France before too long, so I don't want to settle right near near them with this weak city, but... the starting terrain of the city matters. Like if I settle on the desert, it's too slow to grow the city. Eventually they give you technology for free. They get mad at you, but they still give it to you anyway. <sighs> Something's bugged there. It's supposed to give me a technology, but it isn't. Rigged game. Come on. Rigged. Actually, settle here. That might be good. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Just settle there. Just you can just settle right next to them. It's so funny. It's pretty cheesy, but you know. My production will look a lot better once I get some mines and railroads going. Uh, I still can't really get there. The trick is finding a city you can actually get to because I don't can't fly there. Uh, sure, Kursk. R on a, on a road built a railroad, which increases the production there.
another nice thing about those freights is you can use them as a scout. Just kind of scout around and see what's going on because you don't have you have some vision, but you don't have perfect vision. I'm actually not sure exactly what you can see and what you can't. Uh, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, come on, really? I guess I should have talked to him. Sorry, I'm see it's coming a lot here. Really? All together. Because <laughs> I, I can't fight anybody right now. Just gonna die right away. Ah, I forgot about that. Fortunately, I don't exactly have the money to do anything. Yay, rocket trip. brag they have robotics. If I can get that, that's huge. It's one of the best technologies in this game.
All right, so this is an important spot because, first of all, it's a good city in, in itself. It'll have, it'll have these fish here, and eventually it'll get some of these mines and some grassland here. It's on a hill, which gives it a huge defensive boost right away. And this will be kind of a front line city. The way that the terrain defenses work in this game, it's a multiplier, and it multiplies everything. It's a hills is a two x bonus, mountains is three x. So the it, all the defense, the the bonuses just multiply together. They don't add. So having a, a double multiplier to everything is a huge bonus. It means that like normally you lose against any ship attacking, but with the hills you win. It's basically that simple. Looking for side where I should build air units from. Okay. I should rifle here just for some basic defense and switch to a bomber over here. So, so these cities in, in white are controlled by them. You can't work these, but you can move into them. Once you move into them, they become yours, or they will at the end of the turn. So I'll be able to work it next turn. It's really cheesy and funny. Stuff for free, please. Alright, no, that's a bit annoying. They can kick you out, but.
Uh, yeah. Um. I can do with the city. Fortunately. do a really cheesy thing here. I'm gonna mine the city, go to orders, M, so basically, oh, we can transform it to hills also. Yeah, I think that's actually better. I'll, you transform the city into hills and put hills there. So again, that gives it that, that defensive bonus I was talking about earlier. Tiles. That's my tile. So annoying. So ridiculous, you just steal land from people next to you. Good army we've got here, actually. <laughs> the main problem is the French have these have this battleship, and there's like nothing I can do about that. I could build my own, but, or uh, missiles, uh, I could build a missile, 
You still, I think the missiles still usually lose against the battleship, though. It doesn't show you combat odds or anything in this game, you just have to guess. enough army. I mean, I could take I could take Bordeaux right now. It's not gonna be easy, but I could do it. actually important. Sorry, I, sh I skimmed through past it too quickly. They, uh, they exchanged technologies and they gave me the communism technology, which gives me a new form of government. In this scenario, that's normally it's locked so you can't change, but there's sort of a loophole for when you're, um, when somebody gives you a technology, it lets you change. And through that, it'll it'll let me upgrade my government. It's pretty much just a straight upgrade from monarchy that I had before to the new one of mon of communism. Um, unfortunately, I have to go suffer through anarchy, which is annoying. So now all my cities are really messed up. Like you get this waste while you're in anarchy. It's what it's really annoying. Probably a lot of. Yeah, a lot of unhappy cities. government back.
trying to provoke the French into declaring war on me, because I don't want to damage my reputation if I declare a war on them. It actually does make a difference. turns you spend in anarchy is somewhat random, not totally random, but somewhat, and it's really annoying. It really messes you up since I'm spending too long in anarchy, but there's nothing I can do. One fighter. Right. One fighter in Lisbon I need to take care of. I mean, if I go to war with him right now, he's just going to kill. It takes so long to make kills. He's going to. Uh, kill my rifleman with that uh, with that battleship. So this is actually a tough choice. Communism or democracy? Um, the main difference is that with democracy, you get a lot more commerce, which gives you more gold, more research, more luxuries to keep people happy. Downside is you do not get uh, uh, any, your, your military units won't keep people happy. And if people get really angry whenever you, you move units out of the city. So it's, it's harder, it's much harder to keep your cities happy and if any city becomes unhappy, it throws you into revolt. Uh, one huge benefit, though, is that you can't. Other people can't use spies to bribe your cities, which is, which you probably see that later is really powerful. They can just buy a city from you. Uh, it's actually kind of a tough choice here because. All my cities are too small, I think, to really be able to afford a democracy. You're supposed to be a little bit bigger for that. And it just seems more thematic to be 
communist with Spain here. So I think I'm going to go communism. I don't know if that's actually the right choice or not, but I think I think they're both valid choices. It's also just a lot easier to micro. All right, so now I get way more way more money per turn. Also, my cities will be a lot happier now with communism. The units really keep the peace much easier. With the, specifically with monarchy, each military unit gives you one content citizen, but with communism it's two. Ah. Alright, finally finished some hills here. So I have defenses. But everything I need to go to war, except they're not declaring war on me. Oh. Do this and provoke them some more. Still really worried about this battleship. The tanks are the best, even though they're a good attacking unit, they're also a good defending unit. They're the best that I have. Um, they're not good enough to stand up to a battleship without some defenses, but if you add in some defenses they might be able to, and they can at least damage it badly enough that I'll finish it off with that cruise missile. Money, just declare war, come on. Just fortify right outside your city. See how you like that. Thing, so I could just break it. I don't know. Should I just break it? No, no, no. I'll, I'll provoke them. If this goes on much longer, I'll just break it. But the problem is I, I really gotta play cautiously here.
giving me lots of money, that's nice. I don't really need that much money, but... just to spread out the support costs. This city's not very good, is it? there. so I can get some veteran air units going. These bombers are really good, but they don't start as veterans, unfortunately. Veterans is another like 50% uh, multiplier to, to everything, to offense and defense. Coastal 
fortress I can defend against the naval attacks. this city. That's it, that's, that's it. It's the last straw. just happened, I declared war on France, they brought in the neutrals as an ally against me, so the neutrals are no longer neutral, and my reputation has went down slightly, but I guess it's still good enough. See. I'm actually going to wait, I'll take it next turn. Um, well... I want to I want to get rid of these ships and I think they'll attack me if I don't attack them.
bummer. That's fine, no big losses. Alright, so the thing about bombers is they're really strong and attacking. They ignore city walls. Um, they can kill almost anything when they're attacking, but they're super weak to counterattack from fighters, which is the only thing that can attack them in the air. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. I could I could take out this cruiser, or I could take out their fighter, their bomber. Don't have enough movement to do both. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Uh, I could use this crow. Oh, I have a bomber. Ah, never mind then. Picking up the, the bombers is really important because those are expensive and powerful. Cruisers are you know, less important, but you still want to take them out. exposed there. Let's see, I was hoping hoping they would use their battleship there. the hills so they don't use why in a second. They get these free partisan units when you take a city, which is kind of annoying. A ceasefire. I paid them a tiny amount of gold. I got two cities. Two not very good cities, but they're still cities. And this one has a coastal fortress, so that's really good. So it can defend itself against ships. Got them to move away next turn. It's annoying they got all these partisans. Partisans are so super annoying in this game.
guys have a what? 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 Wow. He just he just killed me for a shit. It's pretty unexpected. They don't. I mean, I, was, I thought they would break it, but they don't normally break it. Like, their very first turn. Will take it out. Nah. Once you get them, the units above half, it's a lot cheaper to buy them. Why not?
in this city now. <laughs> so cheesy, but it works. You just instantly plant a forest and get 50% defense. This city has city wall, it makes it a, a 
lot harder to attack. their city. Instant fort. And... Bam. Oh, shit. They have fighters, too? Well... That's not lets you build these howitzer units that ignore city walls, so that makes attacking way easier. Thank you. 
that's just like... You know, that's... Not city walls, city walls. City walls triple the defense against ground units, so you really have to find a way around them.
but it's okay. I'll, um, the bombers have to return at the end of his next turn, so I'll just wait for him to move back and then kill him. What? Come on. That's... That's eh, silly. City, but you can't attack them in the city. Alright. So annoyingly they get these massive defensive bonuses from the mountains, especially this one is a mountain fortress, so that's a times six bonus. I don't actually, I think the fortresses you can't ignore even with howitzers, I'm not sure, 100% sure, but fortresses are really annoying in this game.
Just wait for them to move out of the mountains. supposed to be between the allies and the axis right so it's a stalemate based on how many the axis have but i'm not i'm not really on either side i'm on my own side so i'm still playing I started, I had one million citizens, now I have three million. I think I'm gonna stop here. I'll take this I'll take this city and then I'll stop. I'm getting a little bit tired. Can't really do anything with this one person in the hill fortress, but everything else I'll take, I'll finish off grants. something when you're, you know, kicking their ass like this. But, um, I don't know, hopefully you get a, you've seen a taste of how this game works. I'm still, you know, I'm still definitely one of the weaker civilizations by far, but I'm starting to move out. I have, uh, what do I have right now? armor, four howitzers. That's a that's a, enough to make progress. That's a decent offensive force. Easily enough to take the rest of the French cities. And then going to war with the Axis is a lot harder, but you can still do it. Yeah. Alright, that's enough for now. See you later.